Good morning, everyone. This is Ian Cooper, COO of Skyborn, one of the co-founders. And uh, thank you for attending this Q&A session that we're holding today. Oh, hi there. Good morning, Ian. Um, I'm with David from the UK. Um, just a quick question. Um, obviously, with the decline in airlines and obviously over COVID and recruitment, um, there's been a big surge over time with sort of the integrated training program. Um, will this shove more to a modular sort of training push now? Um, and if so, how does Skyborn sort of plan on doing that or if they are going to? So the, um, there's obviously two, well, there's several routes into pilot training. There's modular and integrated. Skyborn do both. So Skyborn offer the full package in modular. So you can do PPL, hour building, ATPL, ground school, and then on into the CPL and IR training and MCC. So Skyborn offer that whole package. Um, so, um, you know, is there going to be a switch from integrated to modular? I think it really continues to depend on people's circumstances because um, we never say one's better or worse than the other. We just say it's really down to personal choice due to finances, um, whether you have work commitments, family commitments, for example, um, then modular can be... Um, better suited to the individual but we never say that you know one's better than the other because we put the same focus on the training quality in both programs so the graduates that graduate out of those two are the same that we can then put forward to the airlines so it's really down to the individual um, but um, you know it does kind of make sense that some people will be thinking or considering modular over integrated just because of the uncertainty and um, the fact that there may be a longer timeline now involved to get the training completed. So, yeah, we, we offer both um, at Skyworm, but um, it's, it, it's down to sort of your, your choice. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, David. Um, so next question from uh, Mohammed, please. Um, can you hear me? Good morning, sir. Um, I have a doubt on an ATPL course. I'm, I'm from India, so can I join this ATPL course? Yes, yeah, so you can apply on, online for the um, EASA um, ATPL program. Um, but at the moment, as it stands today, Skyborn um, doesn't have the visa requirements to bring in international students. However, we are going through a process that will change that. So by the sort of late summer, we anticipate that Skyborn will be allowed to bring in international students into the EASA program. So you can definitely start the application process and then that will start the, the ball rolling. And then by the time that you're through all of that, then hopefully you'll have the, uh, the visa approval in place to bring international students into Skyborn. Thank you. Okay, thanks for the question. Um, so uh, Tom Perks, would you like to ask your question? From the, from the kind of conversations that you've had with airlines and groups uh, in, the, in the industry at the moment, um, and now that it's looking like kind of the current situation is gonna carry on for much longer, what, what are their kind of thoughts on regards to retention of staff, retention of aircraft, are they going to look to maybe reduce roster hours when we go back to um, to flying or will they sell off aircraft and reduce um, recruitment, that kind of thing? My own personal take on it is that it is going to be different um, for a time. Um, you know, airlines um, in the US have already said that when they can return, they're going to take um, a middle aisle seat out and so on. So it's going to be reduced capacity, which obviously increases the cost of the flying. So that could lead to higher prices. Um, and um, you know that that could put off people traveling for example which then le leads to less frequency and less pilots required so there's so many different variables it's so it's so hard to tell but i do really believe that the industry will bounce back i think it will take slightly longer than it has done in the past where there's been um you know the financial crisis 9 11 um sars they've all bounced back fairly quickly but I mean, again, my personal feeling is it will bounce back, but it's going to take a little bit more time than the previous crisis. But all, all those sort of questions about rostering reduction and so on, the, the airlines, and I'm sure, are navigating their way through all that at the moment. And I don't think anyone has, has the answer at the moment because um, it all depends on you know, how long this goes on for. But ultimately, you know, people want to fly. Businesses need people to fly to, to con continue business. People want to go on holiday. And when planes are involved, pilots are required. So the pilots will be will be needed going forward. It's just how many and when when will we recover to the point that we're at, you know, three months ago when there was, you know, almost a pilot shortage in several um, several areas of the world. Thanks very much. Okay, thanks, Tom. Um, Olivia Taylor. My question is, how do you think that the COVID-19 outbreak will affect jobs for newly qualified cadets? So you've got airlines such as Flybe who are going bust, so there are going to be a surplus of highly qualified pilots. 
um, which might be more preferable than someone who's just finished their training? And do you think this should deter someone considering starting their, their flight training like now? Yeah, a uh, good question. So, I mean, all I can say talk from is what, you know, what's happened in the past. And um, when I've seen a surplus of, you know, experienced qualified pilots versus cadets, I think the answer generally is that airlines always want to mix. So um, they don't want all experienced pilots because then potentially those are all those pilots are all looking for command at the same time. Whereas if they have a mix, there's a nice um, pipeline then of commands over a timeline. So um, I don't think it's a case that, you know, because the market is potentially currently flooded with experienced pilots, there's going to be no opportunities for cadet pilots. I think, um, you know, I think there'll be a mix. Um, and to answer the second part of your question, I think, now is probably one of the better times to start flying um, and start your training because you know if you're starting from zero and going through an ab initio route on integrated or modular then you're looking at the best part of at least 18 months till you come out the other end and i'm hoping that in 18 months the industry is looking at a lot better place than it is today so it's the people that are currently in training that um, have you know a bit of a challenge but you know Skyborne supporting those cadets that are in training with us at the moment with the skills continuation program where we'll give you free training to keep your skills current keep you uh, fresh and ready for when that airline job comes along and so you can go straight into it so um, yeah I think um, as, and as long as you have the ambition and, and drive to do it I still think there will be opportunities out there it just might take slightly longer to get the airline job but if you're flexible and open to different ideas like becoming a flying instructor for a temporary period and building your experience which is never never a bad thing and again Skyborne offers that opportunity through a sponsored um, sponsored FI route so um, yeah I think if you have that hunger and desire and you're flexible it's still worth coming into definitely I mean you know it's, it's the career I chose and I absolutely loved it for 10 years and uh, you, I couldn't recommend the career highly enough and in my time I saw several downturns and um, and saw you know the recovery process and coming out the other side so um, you know, there is a there's a whole load of data out there and historical trends that show that it's a very resilient industry. Okay thank you very much. Thanks Olivia. Freddie Green do you want to ask your question? Yeah, hi, good morning, Ian. My question is based on funding because obviously we all know that that is a massive part of flight training. Uh, you have financing with Optimum, if I believe. Uh, has anything changed on that front or can we expect this to be all the same when we start training? Yeah, I mean, Optimum have actually um, sort of taken themselves out of the market in the last, um, over the last sort of period. So um, that's not actually available at the moment. Um, Skybond's actually working on another solution at the moment, but it's a bit too early to announce at present. So, I mean, from my point of view, the you know um, banks have a challenge at the moment, but they're looking at new ways to um, to offer money. And obviously, if you're offering money to a, a pilot that's looking to train and then go into a career in, uh, as an airline pilot, that's, you know, has got a good salary, a good career uh, prospects, then you know, you're a good bet to um, to lend money to because you're likely to have more return business from you in the future. So, um, you know, although there aren't many financing schemes around at the moment, I think you'll probably see quite a few new ones coming onto the market with the current conditions. Um, there used to be two up until about three years ago um, that got removed from the market due to changes in sort of European legislation. But um, yeah, so I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, no, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. My question is about if I'm applying as an international student for the A2P course, how, how can I up, uh, get this EA as a first class medical student? So for the initial <clears throat> um, class one med medical assessment, you have to come to the UK. There's currently, I believe, three organisations approved by the UKCA in the UK that you have to come to have that initial assessment. And then for renewals, you can get renewals done outside of the UK, but for the initial one, you do need to come to the UK to get that completed. Okay, thank you. That's Thanks, Visham. Any other questions? Um, just another one quickly. Um, obviously with the UK leaving the European Union, um, will this have an effect on how we obtain licenses and how obviously you Skyborne give licenses? So as, yeah, as it stands at the moment, um, December 31st, um, the, the you know the UKCA leave leave EASA, as it stands that may change but as it stands that's the case so at the moment Skyborne is approved by the UKCA so we issue UKCA licenses 
However, we also have EASA third country approval um, when the UKCA leave EASA. So that means that Skyborne could then continue to offer EASA licenses. So that would mean that you do the, um, the ground school and then the final um, instrument rating exam to EASA standards and you get issued with an EASA license. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Do you think cadets will have any issues obtaining their class one medical licenses? I'm due to start with yourselves in October and I was wondering if there's going to be an issue getting my medical before I start. No, I mean, I wouldn't have thought so. Um, by October, you know, I, I recognised your name. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I thought, um, I think getting it by October shouldn't, shouldn't be an issue um, because the, the places that you get your initial um, class ones aren't, um, aren't in a hospital situation so yeah. um it's not like they're going to be restricted for spaces or so on so i, I don't yeah. think that that will be an issue i think once the restrictions on travel and so on are lifted i would imagine that um you'd be able to get your medical completed okay thank you thanks so uh, thank you very much for everyone joining i hope you found it useful um we're going to be running these q a sessions over the next period. So you know, please um, don't hesitate to join in in the future and hopefully we'll see you one day in, in Skybourne. And if not, good luck with the rest of your um, career path with becoming airline pilots. So thank you very much.